Hey guys, what are y'all doing? I am sitting in my shed burning up and it's not for your love, trust me. Most of you are probably pretty pissed off at this last project I did, the Galliano Junk Pile. If you haven't seen the playlist start to finish, it's up there. It was one disaster after another. Of course, it's done. It's D-U-N done and it's perfect, just like you knew it would be. But we are going to switch gears a little bit. We're not going to take an old arch top because I got a ton of them. We'll get to them later. But it's time to make one of these tanks I'm known for uh, that you can rake leaves, dig a flower bed, dig a grave, whatever you want to do. They are rough and tough to the point where restaurant or even, let's do a wardrobe change live. Bob Log the third, where are we? Right there. Can't damage these things. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a before on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna document it along the way and what I do because this guitar is gonna go to Ireland. But let's talk about what I have. I have a set of Grover Imperials in Chrome. I have a parchment penitentiary coin. I have some. There's such a plethora of stuff here. I don't even know what to show you. I got. Ooh, look at these. I got a set of Diarmond pickups. Yeah. And I've got. Ooh, I got some pieces of a Marvel Mystery Oil can. That should be a hint. As to where this one's going. What's the last guitar that you saw with pieces of a Marvel Mystery Oil can? And that was, wait a minute, I'm losing it over here. I'm going to get a workout right now. Okay, I'm not even going to bother to cut that out. The last guitar you saw with Marvel Mystery Oil can, there's a link to the playlist right up there get lost in that one but we're going to ship this guitar along with its tore up from the floor up mississippi license plate and i got a bunch of mississippi matchbooks and stuff this is going to be mississippi up we got wood from where george mitchell discovered fred mcdowell in 1967 we got wood from the grounds of reuben lacy's church no i did not take the cross off of the roof of the church and no this is not the cross but i will pray for y'all i have wood from the grounds where they press sun house records and the rest of them all and they are all going to go going to rent and lips going to go into this guitar so what is this guitar well oh yeah i got some Oak Gall Ink. You've seen one of those before. Have you seen the guitar that I stained with Oak Gall Ink? I think I'm going to give you an episode right up there. I'm burning up all my stuff because I'm going to be doing a lot of things that you've seen me do before. So I'm going to ch chase you down the path where I keep your memory alive for you. But here it is. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, no junk here. Beefy, chunky, single cutaway machine. Not going to be a neck problem here. If you found this in the Pharaoh's tomb 3,000 years from now, this part would still be okay. And that's going to be such a relief. So, we'll go through this episode. I'm just going to show you bits and pieces. We're going to start off with some sandpaper and some lighter fluid because we want to make sure that there's nothing on here. We're going to get ready to do oak galling because this thing's going to be black. It's going to have all kinds of scrapparatus on it. So um, yeah, let's get to the bench. I'm going to blow through this in clips. You're going to see it. You're going to be completely and utterly disamazed and then you're going to covet it and when you realize you can't have it, you're going to buy the music off of the people that will. Let's go to the bench. Okay, this is kind of a weird angle, but let's go with it. It's a big body guitar. 
and what we're going to be concerned with first is sanding everything down on this guitar so first thing I want to point out to you while I'm reaching around and I'm ill prepared you have these holes that are drilled out of the factory and they have a little bit of burring on them so you take your uh, tool your reamer drills don't work as good as these things now you can tell there's a piece of tape on here and that's from where I had drilled a couple of or worked a couple of bridge posts in a guitar or something like this. We're going to do something a little bit different here. We are not going to put bridge posts here. We are going to use a tunematic configuration bridge and a tail piece. I think this kit came with a big speed looking thing on it, but we're going to do something a little bit different. But the first thing you want to do is you want to take a look at these holes and there's some blowout in there. They do these in the factory. They're okay. You're not going to see the inside of the guitar, but we are going to put something up here that you all are familiar with. But these other holes, we are going to fill them with pieces of relic wood or whatever. So we want to make sure that all those are smooth and you just go along everywhere. You have a hole like this with your reamer. Now I have a magnetic holder over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But my tools sit there ready to go. Now... You want to remember that you don't know who's touched this, what was on their finger, oil, solvent, who knows what. And so you always want to keep that in mind. So we're going to have to sand this, and I will tell you that there's not that much sanding to do. Everything feels pretty good here again. These areas here where there's been a machine cut this out or however they did it, you've got... 400 grit sandpaper. We're just going to do some of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you an overview here. You're not going to watch me do the whole thing. You guys have seen me do that before. But I got the neck fit on here, and it drops down into the pocket pretty well. So this is all just put together to show you what's going on. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to take a yardstick, and we want to go from the back of the nut, which is up here, and find out and mark where is the 12th fret so we're going to reach into the love pencil can the wink can and we're going to come down to the 12th fret which is right up here and we're going to go to the middle of it and make a mark now i've used this on another guitar so there are numerous marks on here but that is the center of the 12th fret and i want to drop that down this time the end of the ruler is in the middle of the 12th fret and i want to come down here and make a mark or several where that lines up on the body right here where everything's going to fit and then I'm going to draw a line right here and you can see that that's been done already so why am I doing this before I sand anything well this tunematic bridge sits on this for a base see that now, this needs to sit on here and be shaped to the arch of the body or the soundboard, the top of the body. That's what they call it. Now, how do I do that? Well, I know it's going to be here, so I might take my little pencil over here and give myself kind of an idea there and there. And we'll measure this again, but I'm going to take this off. And then I'm going to take, I have a roll of 1200 grit paper or, or 400 grit paper with adhesive on the back. I use this a lot. So I've taken a piece of this and put it tape on the ends where it will sit right here. And I can pull this off and I'm just going to stick this to right here. Now I can see that mark there and there. So I know the bridge is going to sit right here so i take my bridge and i set it on here like so and i just go back and forth until now see what's happening you see that that means that only this part is hitting and you can see where it's sanding right there now when i get an even mark all the way across here like so and it's getting better all the time now it's going to tell me that 
I don't have any air gaps underneath the floating bridge base and the body because if I do when the string tension goes down let's say there's a gap here and none here all of the pressure of the strings and everything is going to focus right there and that's how cracks start now you can see that the grain in this body is running opposite so that's going to help resist cracks all except for right there and this is all reinforced pretty well but you want to make sure that the arch of the body is manifest or displayed now on the base of the floating bridge you can see that this is starting to pick up here because this is coming down you see that the marks will tell you everything there and once you start looking at the bottom you'll see okay you would have never guessed that that part and this part would have been the bad part so when you look at this we got a little bit to go but I wanted to show you that two pneumatic bridges are pretty cool because the intonation of the string which is again back of the nut middle of the 12th fret to the point that we measured here is the octave and then if the individual strings need to be adjusted that's what these screws are for you can move each one of these back and forth until you get everything exactly how you want it to be another thing you need to think about while you're here is we're going to lift this up a little bit and we're going to take our straight edge we're going to kind of hold this up where the neck is solid and we're going to figure out how tall that bridge has to be by doing this so couple things to get out of the way there then once that's done you can pull this stuff off and you just take a piece of this 400 grit paper and just try to go with the grain but you're going to sand everything to where you don't feel that there's anything sticking up now your friend here is the wipe all rag it's called a rag, but it's made out of paper. And this is wipe all number 80. They're expensive. They're about 15, 17 cents a piece. But you can open them up. You can cut them down. You can get whatever you want. These are meant to replace rags in a machine shop because they're dustless. And they don't leave fibers around. When you can run this over... With a wipe all rag, it will be time for you to stop sanding grasshopper. So I am going to go ahead and do that, get all that done. Now I'm going to shock you with the next step. Once all that's done, I'm going to put on some rubber gloves. I don't have my rubber gloves here, but I'm going to put some rubber gloves on. And then I'm going to take a wipe all rag again, dustless. And I'm going to use some lighter fluid and I am going to go over this and wipe it off very gently. I'm going to keep it away from the binding because I don't want this stuff to interact with the binding. But just very gently go around and make sure that there are no fingerprints anywhere on this. Because when you start applying this oat gall ink, if you've got fingerprints, if you've got oils, if you've got things like that, it will show up and we don't want that. So... Let me keep working here. I'll give you a glimpse here and there of what I'm doing. But before you know it, this body will be jet black and it will look old.
Same thing on the sides and back. Now, I want to show you a little something here. When they put this binding on, sometimes you get a little bleed out of binding. That is going to affect the way your oak gall ink applies. You take a flat razor blade, you put tape on it, so where the, this part is open, and then you can take this without worrying about this scraping wood and just go along that binding, and any of that glue that's sticking out, you just scrape it off like that, you see? Works great, just pay attention to this. We're gonna end up scraping this binding and getting all the, the uh, hide glue the oat gall ink off of it, that'll come later. You just want to make sure that right now, everything that you're sanding is going to be nice and smooth to the point where it doesn't snag up the wipe all 80. Just like everything else we've done. Now, this is arched as well. The center of the body raises up. This is not hand carved. This is machine pressed. So where you're likely to get fiber tear out microscopically is where this concave where the arch meets the rest of the body. So pay attention to that part. You can feel it right there. But again, the test is, does the wipe all rag hang up anywhere? If it does, gives you any friction at all right there. Just sand that a little bit. Notice the grain here runs this way, which is not the same as the front. All right, so I'm giving it the lighter fluid treatment now to get everything off of it. And again, notice that I have my gloves. Notice when that wetting pattern changes, I give it another squirt there, like so. Again, the, the goofiest thing you can do is do all this and then grab a hold of it with your fingers, your oily fingers. And you certainly don't want to put your oat gall ink if the lighter fluid hasn't. Vapored off, that's for sure. I think you all get the, get the idea, right? All right, check it out. I'm at the point right now, we're putting the first coat of oak gall ink on. You wanna be very careful about this. You don't put on a bunch of coats. You just start at the edge of something and you just go this way. We're gonna darken this up with more than one coat, which I kinda of hate. To do because you see all that tiger striping on there but we don't need to get all the way to the edge where we're messing this up we're going to scrape this binding and it's going to come through but no sense in draping this stuff on here so thick that it's running down the sides because if it's thicker in one spot than the other that'll show up later as well as any fingerprints that you didn't get from that being careful with the directions. Anyway, I'm going to do the top. You kind of get what's going on. Don't you worry. It's going to get a lot, a lot darker. Okay, we're getting up close to the end here where everything on the top is covered. We're going to let this dry before we start manhandling it around to the sides and back. Anywhere where you've gone over it against the grain, you want to make sure that your final pass is with the grain. Now, I want you to notice that there are a couple little spots here close to the binding and things. By the way, this is going to be drilled out here. You'll think that's cool. But anywhere where there are spots, like over here, I can take a little bit of lighter fluid before I go to the next coat and touch that up a little bit again, making sure that there's nothing there. To make it stick we are going to let this dry thoroughly now don't get anxious where you're putting on a lot of coats too much because it'll start glopping up on itself and you will end up with something you don't want this will ultimately turn 
a purplish black. That's what we want. It's like we want the whole guitar. In the framing, I'm going to have to have a talk with the production crew. But I don't want to talk to myself on camera. There we go. All right, there we go. We will just let this dry thoroughly. All sides are done, and we'll come back tomorrow for another coat. All right, guys. Welcome to One Day Later, unless you are in Lakewood, California, tomorrow's city today, meaning you've been here yesterday. But you'll recall that we put one coat of Oak Gall ink on this body yesterday and as I've told you the stuff darkens up as, as it ages so we're going to put one more coat on it this evening but before we do that we are going to work on the neck now neck needs to look just like the body in the configuration I've taken the liberty of taping off the binding that's everywhere this this neck has nice binding fret markers, everything. And there's a little glimpse of it right there. It's that thick all the way around. So this is a nice setup here. But we're going to put a little bit of tape along that edge like so. And when we apply the Oak Gall ink this time, we're going to use a little brush instead of ragging it on. Uh, the procedure is going to be the same. We're going to take 400 grit paper. We're going to go over everything. We're going to use the wipe all rag. You've seen this before. And then once that's all done, we are going to use lighter fluid to get everything, everybody, fingerprints, oil, whatever's on here. We're going to get that off. Notice I have the gloves on already. There's no sense in putting more fingerprints on it. But same thing I'll show you when it's done. And then we are going to just go along with the brush now that we're here and put our second coat on. We're going to pay attention. There's a couple little spots right here that we're fighting with me, but second coat all over the entire guitar. This will turn it really dark. Okay, we have the final coat on the neck. That is nice and dark. We're going to set this off to the side to dry a little bit more. And then we're going to take a look at what... You hear that donkey in the background? Wow. So, you see that there is Oak Gall ink all over this binding. But hey, do not hit the panic button. 
Uh, this is an easy fix. We could go along and masking tape all this up here, but that's not necessary. I'm going to show you a little trick here. You see that this is very, very white. This is very, very black. This looks old. This does not look like a new guitar. That's by design. So when you want to start scraping binding, let me show you a little trick here. You can take a violin maker's knife. They, they come left and right. So what you do is you wait for that airplane to fly overhead. But you see, I take my thumb and I put the edge of the point of the violin maker's knife right up against where the binding ends and I do a little scrape like this. See that? And I kind of set a point like so now I can take a razor blade with some tape on it and bring that right up to that edge you see that and start scraping that off and then finally I can take a piece of wood that's of the appropriate width and once I get the main part of it set and cut I can take the edge of this, and again, this is just a piece of 400 grit paper that has the backing on it, and I just set it on like here and put a piece of wood on it, and then keep on rocking it, baby. Hey, Steve Miller Band. They did more blues songs than most people realize. If you just do that, and again, you take your thumb and use it as a guide, and then you just go along the edge and you keep your thumb against where the binding is and it makes this pop right too and it's a nice contrast so for the next hour or so I'm going to be doing this binding All right, we're going to do the same thing on the top now. In the bottom, we know that there's a little edge of binding there, so we're just going to peel it back as we go. In fact, there's some purfling there on the top. Look at that. Just by tilting it back a little bit, and just by keeping your finger in the same spot like so, Nice contrast, look at that. Okay, top's a little bit trickier. You can see that there is purfling, it comes back, so there's a couple, ooh, look at that. It's popping right out. I'm going in as far as the purfling goes. You see there's two alternating rows there. And then once I get that done, I can just bring this out a little bit more and define where everything is. You like that? Look at that. So, not that hard. And once we're done, we're gonna come back to the edge and go along like this. Now, doing the binding around F holes a little bit, you just gotta tilt your finger and you've got there. And then you just tilt the blade like this just a little bit until get that accent right there. You don't need to take too much off. Just enough to give you that accent right there. All right, there we go. We got just a little bit of work to do around the edges here, but that binding turned out nice and it's gonna be time to glue the neck on now. I got one more secret ingredient to put on here to make this shiny. I might let you in on that, but 
Oh, this guitar is going to be under so much pressure that I think I'm going to have to put a gauge on it maybe right there. Let's think about doing that. Hey, guys, you know what? This guitar has got me under pressure. Hey, ZZ Top, how you doing, Pudnas? Anyway, I want to put something in this hole right here that I'm not going to use. I'm going to use some Fred McDowell relic wood here, but this hole is a problem. I'm going to fill it up with this pressure gauge. So if I take a Forstner bit that matches this part and not the bezel part that's going to keep everything in line, I put this bit right here and try to drill there. It's going to water all over the place. So what do you do? Well, get a piece of Patron cigar box. You drill the hole with the Forstner bit there, and then you take this, line it up roughly in the center where you want the gauge, and then you take a clamp and put it there and press it down and line it up like so. And do another one over here. You got to use two, guys. You got to use two just like so and then you take your Forstner bit and you drill down through the top like this and it will be perfect let me show you in a minute bingo Right, guys I really think that this is a good place to split the episode because I know what's still to come and you're gonna have somebody at your place unless you're already by yourself because if you stay in guitars that long if you play one that's that's gonna wear off on them um, yeah because after their fan fangirl and you ain't gonna make a marriage but at the end of the day, when you're down the rat hole watching my videos and people are saying, you know, you care more about Ken than you do me, look at this and really think about how desperate of a thought that is. Anyway, we have the body blacked out. Do you know scorpions black out? Yeah, I'm one of them. But we have a lot of work to do on the neck, so we're going to break the next episode out into just what we've done on the neck and I'm kind of hiding it here so you can't see what all we've done on the neck but we've done a bunch including glue it on the body and then once we get done with that episode the third one will be getting all the scrap apparatus on here and bringing this together because it's going to look awesome so hey give me a like give me a subscribe don't forget there's a playlist forming right up there. There's a link for it on this guitar. And there will be a link for it at the end of the video, which is coming soon. Praise the Lord. God bless you, y'all. Especially you. Yeah, you. <laughs>